you really have the right idea coming out here? Yeah, it kind of washes away all your worries. Like what? Like podcasts? Did you see the guy up there selling raspberries? Yeah, like what was his problem? Want some? I got like four things worth. That's a lot of raspberries! Yes, it is. This is Control Structure, episode 156 for August 13th, 2019. Big week to everyone listening. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs156 to see them. I'm your host, Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Bailey. Raspberry! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I totally forgot how to do these things, so, like, you probably just blew out the levels. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably woke up your kid. Maybe, but he's Who was outside. outside in the truck. <laughs> I didn't bring my truck this time. Outside in your wife's truck. I didn't bring my wife's truck this time. <laughs> so, I mean, either way, wherever your truck is, it could probably hear that. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'll be nice. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Uh, I'm doing stuff. Stuff? Okay. Yeah, Monday's getting me down. Yeah. Or, no, this will be on Tuesday. This is a Tuesday. Tuesday's getting me down. <laughs> after, after summer vacations, you go back to work and you're just like, how many more years till I retire? <laughs> oh, right. That's a long time. <laughs> Better get on my 401k. <laughs> <laughs> So, as we mentioned, raspberry. Raspberry? Raspberry? Raspberry! Raspberry! Wait, was that four or was that five? I, I don't know. I wasn't counting. Anyways, Raspberry 4 was released. It has USB 3, 2 gigabit Ethernet, and it charges off of a USB-C cable, assuming you buy one that's not a smart one and it's a dumb one. Because apparently the smart ones think it's is it a Bluetooth device or something, yeah. so it doesn't actually send it any power. Yeah, like whoever designed it, like messed up the uh, resistors or something. So Oops. like, yeah, or like he like cut out a resistor oh. or something. It's really weird. Uh, but at least the official power cable works. Yes, and it actually plays YouTube now, full screen. It doesn't. Like, get too too laggy. I, we did try putting up on the 4K or whatever the highest for that video was, and I kind of got laggy. But then like the next sitting down, it made it. So I'm like, that's that's a pretty good, pretty good improvement. Because the old one, it would like you put the YouTube video in full screen, and it would play for maybe a couple of minutes, and then eventually the whole thing would just like lock up and like crash and burn. This one is not locked up and crashed and burned, despite the fact it runs hotter. So. Um, let's see, and oh yeah, I didn't didn't put this in here, but uh, someone actually desoldered one of the controllers and got access to the PCIe lane that goes to like the USB controller mm -hmm. thing. Uh, did I send you that article? I you mentioned something about it, like it, I didn't remember something. So, I don't know if I read it or not. But uh, like even though he was able to access the bus, I don't think he was able to like use anything uh, with it. Uh, but yeah. But even with the 3.0, like, that makes something pretty fast. You can plug into a portable driver or something and set something up. Yeah. Uh, it actually makes it sort of feasible for a NAS. It's like, this one opened up to a lot of stuff. Like, this kind of threshold from I have an IoT device doing something to I have a kind of legitimate computer that can do stuff for me. Yeah. like At a good price. At least, you know, like a serious network thing device yes aside from like a dns server mm -hmm. so anyway moving on from uh raspberry how about let's talk about apples for apples a bit. yes uh, i have apples in my apple tree really yes i guess we can talk about your farm in the fringe oh the okay. fringe farm you said apples so i just thought we'd talk about some apples <laughs> anyways you want to talk about the evil apples yes the mac os apples okay uh uh, among the many apples that uh, macOS has is uh, some uh, Python, Ruby, and Perl interpreters, uh, which uh, the company has decided they will no longer be including in future versions. So, like, no more Python uh, 
uh, at least installs natively with your uh, MacBook. That's a quite ironic decision. But then again, it was 2.7, and I hear pretty much everyone installs it through like homebrew or like whatever anyway. I don't exactly have these systems, so like I'm just going off of hearsay. But uh, hey, speaking of Python, uh, the global interpreter lock. Uh, it's been a pain in the butt for, uh, you know, trying to get Python programs to run faster and to use multiple processors that you essentially need to have like multiple uh, Python processes running and somehow mm -hmm. communicating. Uh, this has been somewhat ameliorated through like the multiprocessing module, which like spawned extra Python processes. Uh, but now a there has been a proposal to uh, for sub interpreters. It doesn't exactly uh, get rid of the global interpreter lock, but it works around it cleverly by like the global interpreter lock. So like it's specific to the interpreter. So we can have like multiple interpreters running to get around this pretty clever i'd say interesting so and along with this you know you know locks are generally used to like keep memory you know in a consistent state so like along with this there's uh, going to be a a new pickle module that uh, will allow direct access to memory so it doesn't have to like copy memory back and forth mm -hmm. just to you know use in a different you know interpreter whatever so uh this uh, may might be coming in 3.8, uh, as opposed, you know, like currently Python is on like 3.7. So hopefully in just a few months we can figure out if this worked or not. Uh, so how about Python and Windows? Oh, yes. I wanted to talk about that one the whole time with the Apple one. Apparently now it's going to be a, uh, is it native or do you have to install it from the store? Oh, it says the link from the store. Yes. I, the first time I read it, I thought it said it was going to be just stuck in. But yes, anyways, Windows has an easy way now to put Python in. So that was why I thought it was ironic, as Mac is taking things out. But to be fair, they're taking out the old one. But anyways, uh, getting Python on Windows in a more easy way, which is nice. You just open up a terminal and type Python, and it opens the Microsoft Store. That's the way things supposed to work. So, I mean, the... <sighs> I want to say that they're sort of positioning the store as like a package manager for Windows. You kind of have to, but it it hasn't worked out that way yet. Mm. But it's a good direction to be taking things. Like in Ubuntu, if I don't have something installed, it's like, hey, this is in such and such a package. If you install it, you could run that command. <laughs> so, but uh, either way, you run Python and share your interpreters. You might need to slim down your objects. So there's several ways of, you know, like making a bunch of, you know, little objects that contain, you know, like a handful of data, like, for instance, database rows or something. Uh, so one of the things you could do is put it in a dictionary, which, you know, this, uh, like in this example, there's, uh, he essentially makes a point class, like a point in 3D space, like a mathematical coordinate in 3D space. Uh he, you know, does X, Y, and Z uh, for, you know, in the dictionary. And it works out uh, for uh, 100 million objects. It consumes 24 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so he refactors this into a class with, you know, X, Y, and Z properties, uh, which 100 million uh, slims down to 16.8 gigabytes. Which is pretty significant. Yeah, so you lose about 7 or so gigabytes of RAM, uh, then uh, there's slots, uh, which uh, I'm not exactly sure what they do, uh, but it essentially like reorganizes a little bit, saves a little bit of RAM, down to 6.4 gigabytes, which is like even steeper. Uh, for like 100 million objects, you, uh, you gain like 10 gigabytes of uh, RAM. It's much smaller. So how about a tuple? Just, you know, the three numbers right there beside each other. Uh, sums it, uh, actually increases it a little bit to 7.2 gigabytes. Uh, then, apparently, there's a spin uh, on tuple, which is a record class. And then it gets down to 4.8. And then, like, he actually goes into, uh, was it C Python? Like, an actual, like, C extension. Gotcha. So it's really running in C. 
Yeah. Uh, 3.2 gigabytes. And then he uses NumPy, which I think is a little bit cheating because this is not included with like the standard runtime, down to 1.2 gigabytes. So you're like really like down to the bare metal on that one. But, uh, you know, how should I say, like the record class is like a pretty fair, uh, fair usage without like going too crazy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ubuntu, you're running Ubuntu, right? Yes. Uh, are you on the latest? I'm sure one? this is a quite old one since I basically use it when I visit you. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> I thought you used it for work. Not this one. Oh yeah, like you use like a, maybe a ThinkPad or something you mentioned. Well, I have an HP Z book for work, but oh. I, I I use Windows for work because we're a Microsoft you know gold partner and <laughs> well you know you need to keep keep up those appearances. Apparently, uh, we're running in containers and like so I'm mostly happy. So uh, let's see, you uh, run any 32-bit applications in uh, on your Linux systems? Uh. I think most of where I'm at right now would be 64-bit, because I don't... Like, maybe Wine? So I don't use too much in Wine anymore, because hmm. I'm not gaming that heavy in Linux anymore. If I game, I'm going to reboot it and put it in Windows for, like, World of Tanks. I have gotten World of Tanks to run in Linux. If I was a purist, I could do it. However, the frames per second is pretty horrible, mm -hmm. and you're just like, eee, it was worth my time to reboot it into <laughs> Windows. So, uh, I guess there might have been some kind of miscommunication with the Ubuntu team saying that they wouldn't uh, support uh, i386 packages for, like, the next version of Ubuntu. Uh, but apparently there was a huge uproar, and they're like, okay, 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 you know, let's you know, straighten this out. Apparently it just means that they're not going to make a 32-bit, you know, i386 release mm. of Ubuntu. But they'll still like maintain the repos or something yeah, now. Packages so you could install them, or at least the packages of like the most popular ones. So I mean, it's kind of a sticky situation. Uh, but you know, like if you you know use Steam on Linux, then you should be fine anyway. Uh, so a whole bunch of other upgrades and in, in uh, specifications. So uh, Vesa, uh, like you know, the people that do the video standards. I don't remember them as much like the video like mpg think file formats like that that set the that standards or the more the hardware side more the hardware side okay. um so they're the people behind displayport and you know they recently came out saying oh yeah our 2.0 standard is you know supports like so much resolution like high high resolution and everything so that's apparently out mm -hmm. so be looking for that on your new graphics cards and monitors um so midi remember midi right yes i was gonna make a floppy drive midi player <laughs> i still haven't done that but someday so apparently that's been around for quite a while oh yes i remember the the 3.1 we had had a midi player in it yeah so that'd be like what 35 or so years now i have no idea well it reaches back that far anyway uh, so it has apparently worked well, and they're finally coming out with version 2 of MIDI, which, uh, is going to be backwards compatible. Uh, let's see, let's see the, uh, headlining features of this. So, uh, major update paves the way for, uh, you know, more advanced interconnected devices. Uh, ah, auto configuration, extended resolution, increased expressiveness, and tighter timing. Hmm. I wonder what they mean by backwards compatibility. Does it mean a MIDI 2.0 file would still play in an original so, MIDI 1.0 player? So MIDI is like quite a bit more than those files uh, that you know you double click them and like it essentially like, opens up a, synth a synthesizer. Uh -huh. uh, like it can be used like if you know you have a keyboard connected to your computer. Like, the keyboard would be speaking MIDI to the computer to, like, you know, generate the sounds or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, computer could be connected to a synthesizer, which could actually, like, make the sounds instead of, like, being integrated into, like, the sound card in the inside yeah. or whatever. And, uh, oh, it even has MIDI show control. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, like, control lights and fog machines and, like, pyrotechnics with MIDI as well. Interesting. So, so it's like the Internet of Things standard for doing cool stuff in your house. 
Kind of. <laughs> Except this is more for, like, musical things. Sounds adaptable. So, yeah. <laughs> IoT on MIDI. <laughs> That's right. It will it it'll play work. music in the morning, and like a nice get up sound, and it'll like make the smoke roll out and stuff. And yeah, and as you get and, out of bed, you feel cool with the and, and and like you know, your neighbors will wonder why like all the lights are flashing around your house. <laughs> the sequence with the music that's <laughs> blaring. <laughs> so, PCIe uh, PCI Express version five uh, has also been out, uh, which is kind of odd because only now PCIe 4 devices are coming out. They just released version 5. So I'm not exactly sure how the lag is on hardware implementations. Uh, but, I mean, expect this in like three or so years. Passwords. You were talking about this during the fringe a little bit, right? Yes, passwords are now dead. At least Microsoft's starting to finally get on the bandwagon with everyone else. But uh, not... IT departments, they still unfortunately have to go. Yes. Uh, so yeah, they've you know finally realized that uh, expiring passwords after a set amount of time is a bad idea, and things like multi-factor authentication is probably the way to go. And the, the reality is, changing your password all the time just increases your likelihood of forgetting it. So it's like yeah, and just, writing oh. it down because you're forgetting it. Mm -hmm. Huh. So speaking about Microsoft, we're talking about a lot of Microsoft things. And this is not going to be the last one. So, the next Xbox. Uh, some of the uh, specifications has been announced for this. You know, like the actual hardware inside. Uh, it will have an, a solid state drive. So, you know, all the console people won't be waiting around to load things off of their Blu-rays anymore. <laughs> uh, it'll support 8K resolution. Although I'm not exactly sure if it will be able to render, like, games in that resolution. But it'll, mm -hmm. like should be able to play 8K movies. Uh, and it can do ray tracing, like hardware ray tracing. Uh, also the same for the next PlayStation, because like they're based on like the same chips. Oh, okay. Like it's just an AMD uh, CPU and GPU in there. Gotcha. Just like the you know the current PS4 and the Xbox uh -huh. One, like that's the same way. You know, it has an AMD chip in there. Um, so... Uh, yeah, speaking of, so that means uh, AMD is working on ray tracing. Uh, so look for that in the next generation of uh, Radeon cards. Uh, but for now, we have the Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Uh, so if you remember when we built this... Yes, I remember that. Has the... Uh, was it the other, one of the Ryzen 1000 chips? Okay. Uh, I built a, a, a PC for Pastor. I put a Ryzen 2000 chip in it. Uh, I think maybe a 2400G or something. Uh, so, yeah, now they've iterated and come out with uh, Zen 2, uh, like the design inside. So, yeah, the Ryzen 3000 series is uh, the first one of that. Um, and turns out, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty fast. You know, it's, it's just as fast as like an Intel CPU. So let's pull up one of these. And, oh yeah, you can see the little chiplets inside there. There's uh -huh, like three I've of them. I've seen that. Uh, so yes, yeah, pull up a game here, uh, which, you know, AMD doesn't do quite as well as Intel, but I mean, it's like right up there. Oh yeah, office tests. So yeah, again, like right on the tail, the fastest Intel. So yeah, good job. Uh, also, uh, second gen Epic CPU. So this is like the, the uh, server grade, okay. uh, Ryzen chip, uh, which, Comes at a weird time for uh, for Intel, like they're not able to iterate as fast uh, anymore. Hmm. So AMD's, even though they seemed a little bit behind, if they have a faster cycle time, then they could still yeah. get ahead. Yeah, AMD, you know, in the past has always been a very uh, uh, how should I say? They've championed multi-core rather than like you know like actual faster single yeah. thread. So you know, for applications that could use multiple threads. Uh, multiple cores uh take a look uh and also uh radeon fx 5700 uh which does not include ray tracing which i'm a little bit a little disappointed on uh but it seems to be you know like very how should I say, it kind of undercuts uh the nvidia chips a little bit it's like it doesn't beat the very fastest one 
but like for the same price, it seems to be doing pretty well. So uh, 2060, I think it was, yeah, the 2070 Super, yeah, 100 XT. So yeah, like for like $100 cheaper, it's, you know, pretty fast. It's giving you more. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that aren't cheap, Oracle. Uh, so uh, remember Dying DNS? Yes, I used it once. I was just playing with it, but to make a, my DNS static. I have a static DNS anyways. Yeah, so essentially if you have a like a residential grade connection, uh, this will you know get you a host name or help you get you a host name. But uh, Oracle has decided to move it all into their cloud services whatever thing. So I use this. I might not be migrating, so I might be going elsewhere for uh, my DNS services. Speaking about things that will be uh, going away, but not necessarily going elsewhere, is uh, Microsoft had an ebook store. Did you know that? Oh, pretty much all I knew about that was us talking about how they're they're going away. Because I, I remember we did an article about them will be closing. Yeah. So this guy, you know, essentially goes on a rant. That uh, says, I cannot believe that sentence. The books will stop working. <laughs> he, he keeps saying it and it sounds worse each time. Uh, you know, the good news is, is that, you know, they'll be refunding everybody. But that's not how books are supposed to be. Mm. You know, like if you have a library of books in your house, like physical books, like no one can come and take those. And then his other point, too, was about the free books. And he, and he has a quote from them saying that the free books just go away. And it doesn't matter that you had them, you didn't really have them, they're still theirs, and so they're taking them back. So, but uh, let's go on to something that we'll be getting. Uh, the web search function in Postgres. Uh, so, like, you know, the uh, syntax you, you know, can give to Google for, like, you know, uh, things that must be required and things that, uh, like, should not appear, like that sort of grammar i guess you could call that syntax uh that doesn't exactly line up with the uh the native text search in postgres so the next version is going to have like a translation layer which i think is awesome but i really want this on i think it was like 9.4 that i'm running downstairs oh you don't have to upgrade everything all the way up yeah which is tied to the ubuntu version that i'm running so I would have to upgrade my uh, server like all the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this this is awesome. I so want to have this. Could you containerize it and then just run a container? Possibly, but containers you can pick your host. Possibly, but you know, like if I'm going to do that, I might as well upgrade the whole thing, right? You could. So ah, uh, so remember Chrome? How it uh, was hiding the subdomains. Yes, I, I do recall that. It seems to be a thing that kind of comes and goes. Uh, apparently, they used to used to do it, and then they took brought it back because everyone got mad. Hey, I can see where I'm at. I want to know where I'm at. Uh, so now they've decided they're going to take it away again uh, for good this time. Uh, so it'll strip the www subdomain and the HTTPS colon slash slash identifier from URLs shown in the progress bar. Google giveth and Google taketh away. Yeah, don't use Google as much as you can. So now we're back to Microsoft again. Yes, back to Microsoft. So do you remember, Andrew, way back when, when you were a kid, you're using the computer, you're doing something, you're loading up a game or whatever, it's just taking so long. So what do you do? You just like, with the mouse and the game loads so much faster and everyone thinks you're nuts. So... What do you mean by load exactly? It's just like like the, it's are just, you, are you the talking, game's loading up and so like are you talking about like install like installers or are you actually talking about like loading maps or something? Well, like loading from any anything that's involving loading files from hard disks and things like that, or or copying, or maybe you're copying in some files and you just you just sit there with the mouse and you're just waiting because you're impatient, as we all are. Uh, I did notice a mild effect, you know, like, uh, you totally blew up in the fringe when you saw this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, like, 
Th- this is the thing. We all knew it was the thing, but no one talked about it. It's just the one of those secrets that was in the back corner that you didn't really want to admit you were crazy, but <laughs> but we all kind of knew it. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you have a long running process, it's just going to take a long time, uh, unless you have that extreme example of you know something that would have taken one hour can shorten down to like 15 minutes with moving the mouse the entire time which that's a pretty serious performance increase it's kind of like moving the mouse gives it more energy so it goes faster (laughs) uh but what really happened (laughs) was for reasons that are not entirely clear uh this uh, answer on stack exchange goes but probably due to performance problems on low end machines windows 95 tends to bundle up messages about io completion like file transfers and doesn't immediately wake up the application to service them. Uh, however, it does wake the application for user input, presumably to keep it feeling responsive. And when the application is awake, it will handle handle any pending I/O messages as well. Um, so, you know, due to the cooperative, uh, not the cooperative, the uh, imperative multitasking. You know, like the operating system says, "Okay, program, you have like 15 milliseconds to run." Go. Use it well. <laughs> and then, like, 15 milliseconds for, like, other things or, like, whatever, like, the time slice is. Uh, it's like, oh, we have some user input. <sighs> that installer, okay, go. <laughs> and also, you have, like, some file transfers completed. <laughs> so, yeah. And, like, one of the guys here says, you know, I would really like, you know, an explanation on this because I owe an apology to some people. (laughs) Some people from 20 years ago. So, uh, let's see. I'd like, uh, maybe not uh, talk about this a whole lot, but I'd like to appreciate the AV1 image format, uh, which... Uh, is the which is a image format based on uh, a video codec, which is still kind of uh, how should I say? I wouldn't say experimental. It's kind of like been I think it's been finalized, but uh, it's finally starting to spread around, uh, get more support, I guess. Excuse me. If you thought I was talking a little funny there, I my holding and sneeze back. Yes, you know. Uh, so I've been kind of impressed with uh, this format. It uh, easily has uh, like image quality of a JPEG, you know, like twice the size. Um, so let let me open up one here workshop here. So uh, yeah, this is a 160 kilobyte image. Well, no, actually a hundred kilobyte image. This 1920 by 1200. Yeah. So like just a little bit bigger than 1080p. Um, let's see, how about another one? So, yeah, this is pretty weird. Like, this is still uh, the... While the video format is kind of finalized, the image format has not. Uh, so, uh, how should I say this? The, uh, like, Microsoft has an experimental, uh, like, AV1 video package, mm-hmm. which enables the f- uh, image format to be openable in paint. <laughs> so that Good kind of... That, that kind of makes, uh, you know, the, how should I say, testing this a lot easier. So, yeah, I, like, I'm kind of astounded by, you know, some of the quality I'm getting from these. Uh, oh, yeah, how about uh, StarCraft here? You know, this is uh, 125K, and, yeah, it's pretty sharp. So from a webmaster's perspective, because I think this is probably a web format is the goal. Yeah. If I'm sizing something down to... Your normal, like, I don't know, your 600 by something or 400 by something, what size images were you looking at then? Do what? If you're, if you're sizing down to, like, say, like a 400 by something or whatever like that, because your size, I'm trying to think, normal size, you shoot for, like, 20 kilobytes or so is what, off the top of my head, I'm thinking. Uh, like, well, depends. Where are we going with this one then? Yeah, it depends on, you know, I guess that would depend on each site. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, like for responsive images, like for phones, like that's a really high density screen. Like a high, really mm-hmm. very high resolution screen. So if you have a, a fancier image format that's more efficient, then like that, uh, that uh, increased resolution image can download faster. So. I think I showed you my 404 page on my blog. 
I've seen it. I don't remember what it is, but I know you did show it to me. Yeah. So this is like kind of challenging, I guess, because you can see. Oh, like, this the... is your four four page. I do remember it now. Yeah. So you can kind of see the grass back there is like blurred together. Yep. Because you know, again, this is like a video format. So, like, in further frames, that would, would be sharpened. Gotcha. But this is, like, a still image, and, like, that looks kind of bad. Mm. Whereas the gravel I'm standing on... Is nice and sharp. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you can see, like, a tower back there. It's, like, it kind of fades towards the bottom. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. That is how videos work, though. So, mm. but, uh, yeah, this this is probably, like, the most disappointing image that I can see. Um... Uh, let's see, I think it was like the one of the Shadow Run screenshots I have. Uh, turns, no, it's Hong Kong. Yeah, the combat. So, you can see like the grading, like on this road here. Yep. Is pretty sharp. Mm hmm. So, and, like the text is kind of off. Yeah. But, I mean, you can barely make it out. I mean, the, the red on the black is terrible, but the mm -hmm. white on the red is not bad. Yeah. So. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with uh, with how it does. So again, I want to use this on my blog, but no browsers support it. <laughs> Too new. But uh, when they do, I'll be ready for it. There you go. So uh, we have uh, some things on Reddit. You know, uh, I think was it Ryan or uh, Ian has a script that posts these on Reddit, uh, so you can leave feedback for us there. Uh, or even on the nexus.tv, wherever. And don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day. So back up all your image formats. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So I guess I'll get back to uh, fixing my house and riding my bikes and cooking on my grill. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, if you uh, didn't listen to The Fringe, I want to string a whole bunch of Ethernet cable through my house. So that might be a video episode for it, uh, for this. Oh, there you go. That could be a video episode. Yeah. Then, then we can save time. We don't have to do the podcast. We can just do the video of us snaking the wires around and, and drilling holes. And like, and like lots of footage of me, you know, like drilling holes and enlarging holes and <laughs> beams. And then like a really dismayed footage from the beam is like falling over. And then just like, no! <laughs> so, and... I don't know, maybe footage from the inside of my attic. There you go. <laughs> you get one of those, the snake cams with like the, you can snake into places. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, uh, anything fun with you? I heard you had a whole bunch of babies. I do have a bunch of babies. I had so many babies. I have lots of babies. <laughs> I have guinea hog babies, goat babies, human baby, all kinds of babies. <laughs> so, well, uh, sounds like you got your hands full with that. Kind of do. <laughs> Let's, so I guess you kind of need to get back to that. So have a good one. You too.